I'm in the barn. There's a uh, we got a big winter storm ripped through last night, and now it's pouring down. Big thaw, and uh, there's just water and puddles everywhere. So I went to town and got a, bought a bunch more timbers and wood for this interior here to kind of work on that, and then uh, finally shoveled this place out. So all the horse crap was frozen, freaking solid in here the second it hit the hit the ground. So kid get caught up. But tomorrow is apparently 100% snow dump coming, and uh, apparently lots of places are low power right now. So I think I'll take advantage of being able to. We still have power right now, so I'm going to utilize that. Have a little bit of time out, share some emails, and uh, get get this season rolling. Right. I'm going to get right into it. Hopefully the, the goats aren't too noisy behind me. The horses are right there. They're staying away from the camera. <laughs> Alright, this is titled, Not as Spectacular as the Rest. It's not spectacular we're after, my man. Hey Steve, the story is more for you and the folks who send you their stories. I want to thank you for those folks for an outcome that could have turned out much differently. I'm 68 years old and I find peace and awe in the woods. I'm not afraid of much nowadays. I've survived 11 major heart attacks and died during nine of them and was resuscitated. Of course, I have cancer now, so not a lot of room for fear in me. I'll say, holy crap. I love to hunt, although I really suck at it. We have a wood line out back of the house that joins 700 miles of public shoreline, so there's room to stretch out some. I've been hunting the same small stretch of land for about 10 years now, and this year that land was declared a no hunting zone. I found another piece of ground, but of course it took me a little time to adjust to the new place. It is a different feeling there, but I marked that up to changing spots. The feeling lingered, and after a while I was paying more attention to it. I have a cheap trail cam, I set up down there and I thought, just on a lark, I'd announce my presence in a friendly manner. This is where you, Steve, and your followers come in. I've watched your channel since you were doing hunting stories, and I've really enjoyed them. The Sasquatch stories come in real handy. When I was setting up the camera, I simply spoke softly and said, hello in Ojibwe. I looked up. I looked up the greeting after one of the emails from a First Nation member. I got a non-verbal response that told me someone was watching, but in a friendly manner. So I decided I'd just keep talking and see what happened. I told them I was setting up a camera to see if there were many deer around there and that I wasn't interested in getting any pictures of them. And then I laughed and said, so be careful. I figured if they knew what I was thinking, leading off with a lie might not be a good start. So I said, who am I kidding? I'd love to have a picture. I did ask that they not share, I did ask that they not scare me because I'm just an old man trying to get a deer. That seemed to amuse them. It was an amazing afternoon, and it all happened in, that, in the relative silence of the wood. My tale isn't scary as most of the emails that you read, but it was pretty scary to me. After I got well on my way back home, I was relieved, pardon the pun, to find out I hadn't wet my pants after all. I thought I would like to see these people, but now I've changed my mind. You folks are right. Although I keep my eyes on the ground, and I talk talked out of sheer fear. I have no desire to be in that situation or any like it ever again. I do have conflicting Hey! Get along. Nothing like being in a small quarters of two horses kicking around at each other. Where was I? You folks are right. Although I kept my eyes on the ground and I've talked out of sheer fear, I have no desire to be in that situation or any like it ever again. I do have conflicting feelings about the whole thing, that it was not threatening, and I was scared to death at the same time. How's that for crazy? You can read this thing or not. It's completely up to you, of course. There was no knocking or screaming. At least I don't think I was screaming, lol. No sighting, no smell. There's pretty much a nothing burger, but I'm so thankful to you and your contributors for having a major hand in the outcome, in that outcome. I'm not leaving a location so as to not disturb these people, and no name to give away a location. We met in peace, and we parted in peace, and that's how life is meant to be lived. Thanks again, Steve. Old man, dry pants. <laughs> All right, so that's a uh, that's a good outcome, and it, you know what? It's it sounded fairly simple and innocent of his tale you share, especially the way you delivered the part where you could sense these beings there when you're setting up your camera. 
you didn't really emphasize too much drama into it, but I got the picture. I think we all got the picture clear. And uh, and I agree, man. I've had friends of mine, a very A-type friends of mine, hunting with me, and uh, I told them flat out when we've been away elk hunting that these things are here right now. And I had one guy in camp kind of laugh, and I just looked at him sternly and I said, "This isn't bullshit. This isn't a joke." And the other guy was talking, "Well, I'm not seeing him, but he always said he wanted to see one." And he always bugged me about going to where, where people were seeing them near where we lived. And I'm like, no, I'm not into it. I'm not into it. And then finally he saw, he saw the seriousness in my tone and my look when I looked him in the eye. And he, he said himself, he goes, you know what, I realize this is very serious. And from your reaction, I've changed my mind. I don't want to see one. I don't want to have that experience. I'm like, no, you don't. Many of you might, might disagree with me, but um, I, the majority of people that understand a lot about these beings understand that they want to be left alone for the most part so do we right so if you try to you try to uh, coexist that way you shouldn't be able to enjoy the outdoors with no problem unless that one in a million billion comes around and you have a encounter with one of these beings that's not so stoked on human beings right but anyway i'm glad you're still out there hunting man and i hope your health gets better holy shit that's a lot of freaking heart attacks <laughs> You must be one tough old son of a bitch, right? But keep living it out. Don't quit. Keep living it out, all right? Keep going. And I got a horse sneaking up right behind the tripod. Don't be knocking that over. All right, right. I mark this one as red. I got a pile of them. I think what I will, I will do if this storm really starts, starts ripping along, I'm gonna. I will start to try to go back into all of the shared email videos and I will number them, all right? It'll take a little bit, but I think I might do that. Your emails are being read and tracked, question mark. From the last time I wrote, to about four days after, I had black helicopters all over my place. I see medical ones maybe every three months, but the day after, four days in a row, I waved at one. Maybe it's Maybe it is just a fluke. Maybe it's because I mentioned Fort Lewis. Who knows? For sake of time, in the last email, I guess I left out the meat and potatoes. First time I saw him, end quote. So I'm telling this now. So I knew I had been. So I knew I had been tagged by this point. I believe many of us are. We just are not aware. All of us can mind speak as well. We have just not been taught all of our true abilities. Humans would be able to adjust and feel less fear if we were taught the real ways of the world. We are stronger than we get credit for. So before camping, I tried to send an image of where I was going, close to where I lived, and I got back, they already knew, or didn't need the information. And the answer to the question I pushed out was, yes. The question, would you show yourself to me? I'd already asked for a requested way back I had already asked or requested way back when, Steve, you asked us to ask who was hunting them. To please always communicate quietly and to let them know it would scare me otherwise. Our nervous system is not developed as theirs. They respected me since day one. For this reason and what they have been teaching me, I felt nervous but ready. Wow. The campsite was full, not very well lit because of the fire bands. I didn't get any daytime sighting. Two nights in a row, I saw one of the two who are around constantly, consistently. Cuddle up my two gals, rain tarp off the tent to see the stars first night, went to sleep. Felt a weird sort of arcing on the ends of my toes, foot to foot energy, which they were poking at end of tent, which they were poking at end of tent. We were crammed in like sardines. I thought, okay. Well, I could just be having some nerve issue. Means nothing. Mine spoke and said, if that's you, can you make a quiet step? I heard a slight scrape on the ground in my side, on my side of the tent. Fell asleep. I woke up in the middle of the night, looked up to the stars, and saw a large figure leaning over the tent, staring down. I closed my eyes, Steve, thinking it was just branches. It's my head, right? I opened my eyes again, let them adjust, and he was still there. My tent is five feet. His size had to be double that as he was leaning inward. Shoulders had to be 40 inches, dark brown, no noise made and no smell. Definitely there. 
Now I began to get a little nervous. Heart started to beat faster, so I closed my eyes again, opened them, and all I saw was the stars and a line of the small branch. I do know they can be unseen, but he could have leaned back as well. I cuddled up on my side and went back to sleep. Everyone needs to know they have always made me feel safe. The next night it happened exactly the same way. When I felt nervous is when he left. The second night, however, after falling back asleep, my hand was pushing on the tent while asleep and I felt a very large, very warm hand press against me. I left it there for a minute and then pulled away. Again, a little nervous. It was very warm and the palm covered the way all the way to my fingertips. Now I know I may be called crazy, but I am not. I believe in God who made the entire universe. That is who I ask for protection. Just like with us, little brothers and sisters, there are more good than, than taken over by bad. I'm still aware many have had very bad experiences. They explain this to me, but I keep writing way too much, I feel. Please, everyone, keep sharing. We're entering the time of the knowing. Jay. Okay, Jay. Thanks for that email. That must have been pretty freaking intense to have something touching your hand on the other side of the tent. Uh, me being intense for much of my life in the middle of nowhere with basically every big game animal you can come up with lurking around in the, in the forest, I would be overly stoked to have something touching my hand intentionally on the outside of the tent, especially if it was about 10 feet tall. But keep learning, all right? Keep learning. If that's what you're up to, if that's what you're into, keep learning to be safe. And if you got more information that people might benefit from, make sure you send it in, all right? Because we will share it. We'll share it to everybody. It's going to help somebody. It's going to help somebody. Move down the list. I want to get through this one big list so I can get onto another one that I already have. There's so many. And this weather sucks. I want to get out in the middle of nowhere and take everybody with me and get some steelhead fishing and exploring in. I kind of got my hands tied right now, getting cabin fever. <laughs> All right, felt the pressure is the title of this one. Hey Steve, my name is Scott. I want to share this experience that I had in a large backcountry area of Clark State Forest in southern Indiana. It's a remote track with limited access points, so it's kind of off the beaten path. As an avid outdoorsman for most of my 62 years, I treasure such places to escape the hordes of lazy outdoor goers who overuse the easy to get places. I found the place by checking out maps and found a pull-off to an old logging road blocked by a pipe gate. After some initial short scouting hikes, I returned in spring turkey season and managed to bag, bag a fine tom not longer after sunrise. When fall eventually rolled around, I decided to do a scouting trip for bow hunting whitetails there. I stuffed some ultralight camping gear into my pack and hoofed it in, following the old logging road. I passed the turkey hunting spot and proceeded a few miles further through the thicket choked bottoms. After crossing a creek, a finger ridge came down from the main ridge to my right. It was mostly open mature hardwoods with an occasional cedar. I could see the bucks had been busy as the rubs on the cedars shone, shone like signposts up the ridge. I started the finger ridge and came to a small flat bench where I dropped my pack and began setting up my small tent as squirrels dropped beech nut balls from far above. With the tent set up, I started up the cedar rub line and found most of the rub fresh and from years past. Oh, that'll be a goat on top of the uh, garbage can lid. What are you doing? Hey, come here. There we go. Most of the cedars were the diameter of baseballs and softballs, so I was excited about a mature buck being in there. There were lots of acorns, scrapes, and bedding cover atop the ridge. After several hours of scouting, I found some trees along some pinch points for my portable climbing stand and was encouraged as I headed toward the tent for some dinner. I boiled some water on the stove for the dehydrated meal, for the dehydrated meal as the late afternoon sunshine dappled its warmth on me while the breeze brought down colored leaves brought down colored leaves all around. It was a fine afternoon and I was pleased and confident about the scouting. I planned to return the next weekend to hunt. 
I ate the meal and was about to start more water for a hot cup when suddenly things changed drastically. Everything went dead still. It was like a vacuum, it sucked all the sounds away. No birds, no busy squirrels, no breeze, no alarm calls. Kind of like my ears popped by an unknown force of pressure. Just silence and an overwhelming feeling of something really wrong. My heart pounded as I gazed around. Not sure was what I was expecting to see, but saw nothing out of the ordinary. With each passing moment, a rush of urgency and dread began to overtake me. I've never experienced anything like it before or since, but in my gut, I knew I just wasn't supposed to be there. I had to wait around and I began stuffing my gear in the pack and taking down my tent as I swiveled my head. Oh, that was a big chunk of ice and snow that blew off the roof. I felt the wall was caving in on the goats. I didn't wait around and I began stuffing my gear in the pack because as I swiveled my head around, as if feeling unseen eyes upon me. I shouldered my pack and beat feet down to the logging road, heading back the way I came. At a brisk pace, it became a jog. I saw nothing and only heard a voice in my head to get out fast. I never stopped and made it back to the truck just at, I never stopped and made it back to the truck just at dark, shivering in a cold sweat. Only after a few miles of driving did my mind begin to shake off the feeling of dread, only to be replaced by the questions that I still wonder about the answers to. What was that all about? I've often considered going back there to see if I might find an answer. Maybe it was a benevolent warning, and I'd find a huge dead tree fallen right where my tent had been. At the time, it sure didn't feel benevolent, though. I have no idea, as I never have never had, have had an experience that unnerving and intense before. Was I being intimidated by something? as an intruder, as an enemy, as prey, and why? So many questions unanswered. I still continue to pursue my outdoor activities, solo and with others, but I never have returned to that place, and the memories of that feeling in my gut just might keep me from ever going back in there. I've never had that feeling since. I've only shared this with some family members and a few friends. None of them seem to know what to think about it either. Maybe someone else could make sense of this, but for now, I'm happy in other places places without that awful feeling of dreadful pressure. Thanks for a place to share this, and thanks for all you do for so many people, Steve. Keep up the good fight, and we're all searching for truth and freedom from control. Love the scenic beauty, landscapes, and wildlife shots that you share with us. Tight lines, peace, blessings always, Scott. Scott, thanks for that. Thanks for taking your time to send that, man. It's funny, when you mentioned you bagged a nice Tom out of there, you gotta love that feeling though, right? You do you love it when you figure it out. You figure out a spot on your own without following somebody or somebody taking you somewhere. And uh, you figure it out, you put in the effort, and you went in there and you got that big tongue. And when I read that part, I was like, yeah, that's what it's about. And then you found that spot with the sign of big bucks and nobody around, which is freaking wicked. But then you felt the pressure, which I felt, and obviously which hundreds of people have felt that have shared on this channel alone right here, right? And uh, for me, I mean, I felt the pressure in, in one of my best spots ever, but I still go. And you, maybe you've heard me say it before, maybe you haven't, but what I do is I just take baby steps and I go back in there. And sometimes I say it out loud in the dark when I'm like, in, sometimes, sometimes I just say it under my breath. And usually I think it in my head about 50 times a day, it seems, when I'm in there. But I just say, hey man, leave me alone. Just leave me alone. I'm not here. I'm not about you. I care about you. And, uh, I don't want to bump into you, and I don't want you to bump into me, and I don't want, I just want us to leave each other alone. And it seems to work for me. So, what I'm saying is, the buck sign that you mentioned got me jacked up too. I love that. And it'll be a shame to have come across such a place and possibly, possibly take the, the pressure feeling the wrong way. You never know. But you might want to try to go back there and take baby steps, baby steps. And just before you start your hike, just say it out loud, man. I'm not here for you. I don't care about you. I'm not trying to get a picture of you. I don't want nothing to do with you. Just leave me alone. To try it. Because I'll bet you there's a great big hammer buck in that ridge, right? And you never know. But I mean, uh, you, you, and the other thing you gotta think about too is you have that feeling already and you made it out of there at home safe and were able to email all of us about it and nothing happened, so. Like I always said before, 
successful predators don't warn their prey, right? Anyway, be safe out there, man. Don't give up. If you get any more knowledge that you think somebody can benefit from here, make sure you get it to us, all right? What do we got? What else? Okay, the Forest Service. Okay, I'm gonna smart. This is red. I think this sounds familiar. The Forest Service knows all number two. All right, we heard this one. All right, I'm right. Oh, sorry, let me start reading. <laughs> Excuse me. Dear Steve, I wrote a few weeks back regarding my experience with Savvy Will and the Forest Service. I was pleasantly surprised that I wasn't attacked in the comments. I guess I was believed. I have just too many facts that can be semi-verified. After my two seasons of getting burned over, after my two seasons and getting burned over in our shake and bakes, mylar type fire shelters. Oh, I get it. All right, so you got burned over. Holy shit. That must have been freaking terrifying. So for all you that is not familiar with that is, that's when these uh, these fire jumpers will be on a slope in a mountain. And what happens, it can be the thermals change, the wind changes, and it starts ripping the fire up towards them. And they have their fire fire barrier emergency blankets and they pull them over themselves. And that's, and then they just sit there and hope for the best. And I have read some real heartbreaking stories of entire crews getting melted when that happens. So for you to have been, quote, um, burned two seasons and getting burned over in our shake and bakes. Ugh, so it happened once, whatever. I couldn't imagine that terror. Forest fire skipping over top of you as you're laying on the ground with a frickin' fire retardant blanket on your back. Feeling like a baked potato and wrapped in tin foil. Crazy. Sorry, babbling. I took my money and went off to college in Santa Barbara. Being an avid rock climber, I climbed in the San Marcos Mountains above the city. Many times climbing in remote areas, a couple of miles from the road, strange things happened. I knew, but was never able to tell my climbing partner what I knew it was. He was a believer, but I was scared of getting into trouble. Small and big stones crashing into the thick underbrush in the area. Twice we got the smell, and not such a good feeling. I guess these didn't, these didn't get the memo that I was on the team. Different communities, I guess, don't always communicate. I gave him my best mind speak that we were just here to climb. This was not okay, and I can only guess we would have found places they were. These were bush whacking approaches to first ascents. No one had been into these 50 year old stands of Manzanita and Nancy Thicket. If the rock started to get bigger, it was a hint to leave. As soon as we started to pack our gear for the couple mile hike to the car, we always felt completely calm again. I can absolutely prove there were zero humans in over a mile. We made the trail, so it would have been impossible. The Chumash, First Nation people of the area, know all about them. They were mainly on the Channel Islands. We coincidentally were, coincidentally, sorry, there's a couple of spelling, spelling mistakes here. Where, coincidentally, there are reports of giants going way back to Spanish times, as well as giant skeletons being excavated then the Smithsonian losing them again. Yeah, no shit, those dirty bastards, right? Working for the government in several fashions over the years, I've experienced these things in four different countries and many types of terrain. These were my encounters immediately following my work as a firefighter for the USFS, the USDA. I was 21 and it was just beginning to get weirder. I've since experienced much more now than I'm aware. I realized they were always there, but without knowing, they did not stand out to me. The rock throwing has then and now many times happened. Heard as whoops continued, and I noticed many more tree structures. I will not hunt alone with anything smaller than my trusty Ruger M77 7mm mag and a 44 Ruger Red Hawk loaded hot. I'm not afraid. Red Sun Tzu. Good advice all around. Oh, read. Sun Tzu, S-U-N, capital Z-S-U. Good advice all around. Please feel free to use my name again. No black helicopters or SUVs yet. Respectfully, Jason Walter. All right, Jason, thanks for that, man. Hope I didn't butcher it too much with my awkward reading. I don't know what's going on today. 
Usually I get the I get funny uh, the lights behind me are reflecting off the screen and that can screw me up. But it sounds like you're pretty dialed with what's going on up there, man. It sounds like you're pretty dialed in tune. Make sure you uh, share some more with us, all right? If you got some good solid knowledge there, share more with us. And I remember you writing it before. All right, one more, and I'm going in. Oh man, I just read a double again by accident, and he even said it sent. He sent it again. That kind of sucks because but people send their email, and they wait a while to send it again, and it gets copied, put in the notes, and then we blaze it down twice, and that sucks. Now what do we got? Hope I've read this. Just mark as read, and this is titled "Tree Snapped." I just watched your episode of the Snapped Off Trees. I started shaking and got big tears in my eyes. I came across a similar scene once while walking out from a fishing hole near Forks, Washington. By the way, I, have a, I live a little south of you in Bellingham, Washington. I have a brother who lives in Forks and have been frequenting, frequenting the peninsula my whole life for 55 years. I know the backwoods and roads out there better than I do where I live. One of the many things I learned over my many hunting seasons is never walking over the same path twice in a short time span. If I know the area, I will make a loop for many reasons. I don't want to run into something that may be tracking me, and I like to arrive in my vehicle from a different direction in case I was observed leaving. In any case, while fishing a spot that took a good half hour to walk into through dense reef prod, I heard a commotion 75 yards or so downstream and thought it to be an elk taking out his frustrations with his headgear. About an hour after carrying it, I decided that the, that the catching was poor, but it had been a good day of fishing. Time to go. I walked down to where I thought I heard the noise and entered the reef prod to complete my loop back to the truck. About 10 yards in the reef prod, I found a similar scene that you showed. What I found were volunteers. What I found were volunteer alder trees as big as my forearm snapped off six to seven feet high and all tops laying outward forming a circle about 20 feet in diameter. The area had that odor that is undescribable and I got an instant chill. I took a more direct route back to my truck making noise and having a loud conversation with a passed away relative that used to hunt the area in the 80s. You validated everything I saw and thought. Things I don't, thanks, I don't feel like an idiot. And now no, I did exactly what I should have done. Mind my own business and haul ass without running. Also, some local history. There's been a few reports that made the local newspaper, including one where a lady reported running one over with her car. The 9-11 call she made somehow was erased from record. Hmm. I don't expect you to read such a simple report, but if you have time, please send me a reply. I would like to know how much you know about my backyard under the shadow of Mount Baker, Whatcom County. Okay, man, thanks for sending that. Um, I, don't, I haven't run around those woods myself at all, ever. That's stateside, right? I'm, I'm on the Canadian side. Um, about 99% of, about the closest I've come hunting, hunting to you in the forest near you is steelhead fishing around Chilliwack, around Chilliwack Lake. Ran around there a bit. Um, I ran around Hope, you know, southwestern BC, but not your side of the line in the woods. Uh, as far as you getting out there doing the right thing, Tommy knows, the gut knows, right? And uh, it's, it's funny, when, with what we saw in videotape that two years ago, it's funny how many people I, I don't, I can't explain why the reactions or how the brains work, but it's amazing how many people will, will leave a comment or message me and go, those were bears, plain and simple, end of story, a bear did that. <laughs> and they get angry, isn't that funny? People are funny, imagine that, I'm telling a lifelong hunting guide that he uh, is mistaken bear sign for something else, and that wasn't the case. But anyway, um, I don't know why they do that, I have no clue. I really don't. It looked like it was done out of frustration to me, the scene that I saw. Um, but I don't know. I haven't clipped until somebody tells me flat out what's going on. I All we can do is assume and guess why we do that, right? So what a blatant display when you take that many trees and snap them off at that height and even have a grab a, what I videotaped too, the ground of those whole bouquet of five of them ripped up together. 
together one tight handful of bouquet and put in the ground. Well, like that, right? Not a claw mark on them. Not one scrape of a tooth or a claw on one piece of bark and all those dozens of small trees that I witnessed snapped off and pulled up straight up out of the ground and laid down on the ground. And not one pile of bear shit anywhere. We all know how often a bear shits as he's gorging himself on whatever in a small area. Right? But anyway, it's not even worthy of my time to debate that one, did it? But anyway, good luck out there, man. Thanks for sending that email. And I will close this email with what I just came across on my phone. I managed to copy some photographs of some a trackway footprints that were left on the logging road. I believe as a Canadian forestry employees came across this while working and they took a video of it and they added the video in and I managed to save it to my phone. And guess what? I can't find the original email. But if I remember correctly, there wasn't too much text with it. But if you are the man that sent me the video and the uh, photos of the footprints, send me an email back again, all right? Because I don't even know, I didn't have a name attached with the, when I saved the photos and the videos clip in my photo album on my phone, it didn't save anything that I could search on my inbox email to, to link that photo up with the email again. Sorry, trust me, it gets confusing on my end sometimes. But here you go. Here's a trackway video and photographs from some forestry employees in Canada who emailed it to me. Um, I'll see if uh, I can blank out. Probably shouldn't leave the, the business name on the side of the truck in the video. I'll try to blank that out. And I will be back again to share more as soon as I can. Hopefully, I'm going to take you guys on adventure with me the next time. Be safe out there. I'm not much of a believer, but I don't know how you can. Just drive right in front of one another.